This week's tip is the difference between automation and orchestration. And they're both words that are used a lot, especially in the world of composable architectures and system integration in general. And automation is easier one to understand, so I'll start there. And I thought this word was a really old one, or at least that the idea itself was an old one, but it turns out that it really isn't. It was coined by an engineering manager at the Ford Motor Company um, in 1946 to describe the way that they were starting to replace people with machines on assembly lines. Um, today, most of the objects in our world are created through automated processes, um, and automation in the context of a computer system is really the same thing. Uh, think about a task you perform on your fo your phone or your computer or mobile device. Um, like maybe anytime you get a text message from your crazy uncle, you always forward it to the same group of your friends. And you know your uncle only sends you pictures of dogs dressed in human clothes. And this is something you can automate because there are actually tools that you can use to describe the steps that you want to automate. Like when the text message comes in and it's from a certain phone number, you want to forward it to a certain group of people. Um, that's a trivial example, um, unless I guess your uncle has an incredible collection of these pictures. But automation is especially useful in cases where a task has, a, has to be performed a lot of times, like if your uncle has a lot of pictures and is sending them to you constantly. Um, or um, for tasks that maybe aren't needed a lot, but are very pr precise and complex. So automation can remove the chance of a human making a mistake. And the last thing I want to say about automation is that not everything can be automated. So if you don't understand a process, it really can't be automated. And this can be a little tricky because you might think you understand a process when you really don't. So what about orchestration? Um, this isn't as familiar a concept as automation. The goal of orchestration is to get multiple things to work together to accomplish some sort of goal. And in computer systems, orchestration usually refers to getting APIs to work together. So you'll often hear about back-end and front-end orchestration, and they both involve getting APIs to work together to make it easier to use those APIs. And they usually work the same way. A new layer gets created that manages calls across APIs. Um, and the reason why you do that is so developers don't have to learn a large number of different APIs. So an example here is you're collecting product information from a variety of systems for an e-commerce site. And as a developer, things are a lot easier for you if you can just request product information and let something else handle making all the calls to all the different systems that provide the product information that you need. So that's orchestration. A newer form of orchestration involves getting business applications to work together. So it's not the APIs, but the applications that a marketer or a merchandiser or really any other kind of practitioner uses to get their work done. They might use a lot of different systems, so having something that can get all those systems to work together in a way that feels like they're part of a single system, um, that would be really valuable. And it's something that's becoming increasingly important as composable architectures are getting adopted. Orchestration offers the chance to get the benefits of a composable architecture, like being able to use products from different vendors and the products that you pick, um, along with the benefits of a monolithic architecture, um, which is the feeling that you're working in one cohesive system. So automation and orchestration are essential parts of a composable architecture. So it is important to understand what they are, and I hope that this tip helps you with that.